Hello everyone and welcome to part two, regulation of the cell cycle. Now, before we go into the three different things we're talking about, let's talk about just the cell cycle and how important it is. Now, as we saw in previous lectures, that the cell cycle is not made out of just, you know, mitosis. Most of the time, the cell is in interface where cell growth and DNA synthesis occurs. There's only a small section of time where the mitosis happens. Now, at different stages of the cell cycle, there are actually different checkpoints in order for the cell to make sure things are actually functioning properly. Um, and the duration of the cell cycle might differ for different types of cells as well, and is tightly controlled and coordinated. Now, the purpose of these checkpoints, other than to, you know, determine cell cycle duration and whether it's coordinated, it also prevents from the, the cycle from continuing when there is something wrong. So if there's something wrong with the cell cycle, stop it before the cell divides, destroy the cell or repair the cell before moving on. So for example, I think um, one checkpoint we specifically talked about previously was the cell the checkpoint in G2, where there was repair of DNA, um, just in case there are any mistakes that occur during DNA replication in the S phase. So maybe in the G2 checkpoint, the cell would check whether all chromosomes are replicated properly, is the DNA damage. During mitosis, there might be another checkpoint to see whether the chromosomes are lined up perfectly during metaphase. Did it all line up in the perfect center of the cell, all right, which is the equator, ready to be pulled apart to opposite poles, right? So how is the alignment of chromosomes going is checked as well. Now at the end of G1, there is also another checkpoint. Uh, maybe the cell would be looking at these things, right? Is the cell big enough? Are there enough energy? Because the cell cycle sorry, mitosis and DNA synthesis actually requires a lot of resources and energy for the cell in the form of ATP, of course. Now, there's also checking for DNA damage here, but not so much as the G2 checkpoint, maybe in different forms. So yeah, um, these are not for you to memorize. These are for you to understand that the cell cycle is tightly controlled and coordinated. Moving on in this part, we'll be talking about three specific topics. So we are talking about the regulation of the cell cycle in three perspectives. Number one is telomeres. Number two, we'll be talking about stem cells. And number three, cancer. What happens when the cell cycle goes wrong? Mm -hmm. Let's start this video with telomeres. Telomeres, as we have learned in the first lecture, Telo means N, and telomere means N of the chromosomes. And you can see that they are here at the end of the chromatid. Now, what are they actually? They are actually a region of repetitive nucleotide sequences. So they are a length of DNA at the end, okay, with repetitive nucleotide sequences. They do not code for protein, so they do not have any genes in them. They are just there. Now, you might think that they're useless, right? So what do they do exactly? They don't look code for anything, right? So this is what they do. They actually play a protective role in preventing the loss of genes. How? Now, DNA replicating enzymes during um, S phase, you know, DNA replication, they actually stop a little before the end of the DNA molecule. So they don't um, copy the entire length. They might miss one or two nucleotides, especially at the end. And since telomeres don't code for anything, they are, they have, there is no genes in them or anything, they protect actual genes from being lost. So they prevent the loss of genes at the tips of each chromatid. However, by protecting other genes, they get shorter over time. And a few bases of telomeres are lost each cell cycle. 
telomeres get shorter with each mitotic division. And in, eventually, eventually, uh, there is uh, better illustration here in the next slide. Eventually, there will be no more telomeres. Okay, get shorter and shorter each cell division. And eventually, um, since no more telomeres are available, the, the um, end of the chromosome with an important gene might be harmed during cell division and the cell would die. Okay, the cell will not be able to function, the, or the cell would detect that problem and um, kill itself, pretty much. So cause itself to die, so that it won't pass on faulty DNA to its daughter cells. So it's a, it's a mechanism, right? It was quite interesting that telomeres get shorter with age. So what we're saying here is that cells can only divide so many times. This cell, one cell here, may be able to divide four times, five times, or maybe in real life, hundreds of times before one day, it doesn't divide anymore, it dies. And as cells die, right? And if cells die really quickly, we die and we age. So telomeres is always associated with aging. Now you may be thinking, what if we can find a way to repair telomeres? Then maybe we can live forever because our cells can divide over and over and over, right? Well, the answer is there is actually an enzyme out there that repairs pairs telomeres. Actually, it's not even out there. It's in our DNA. Our DNA codes for an enzyme, telomerase, that repairs telomeres. It stops the telomeres from getting shorter each time, and therefore cells can continue to replicate limitlessly again and again because the telomeres don't get shorter. However, even though our DNA has the code for telomerase. Telomerase is not normally active. It is not normally expressed in human body cells. It is only expressed in stem cells, which we'll be talking about in the next video. But stem cells are amazing cells which help us heal wounds, okay, mostly. And they are uh, the cells that can divide rep limitlessly. They are very important. We'll learn in the next video. However, telomerase is also active in cancer cells. And can you imagine cancer cells dividing limitlessly? What havoc can that cause? We'll learn about cancer as well in our next, next video. <laughs> so that's it for telomeres today. See you next video.